And just like that, we're back. Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday we was like, or last episode, there was probably, there was some type of little banter at the beginning of the episode. We're not going to do that today. We're going to go right to the first story. Uh all right. So that people don't, nope. yeah. So that people don't know what to expect from us. Okay. Cool. Sometimes they think, oh, maybe it's going to be some banner. Sometimes they think, uh, no, it's going to be the headline straight up. You want to throw them off. That's right. All right. You never know what to expect. You know what it's like. It's, yeah. You you know I've been coaching baseball, right? There's you got this. I'm about to do the banter. <laughs> I'm going to do it quick. All right. Listen, listen, listen. You got a fastball. You get a changeup. All right. I know you know a lot about baseball, so I don't need to explain it to you. But sometimes you got to throw the changeup. Okay. And that's an that's an off speed, right? So the person has timed themselves up for the fastball, and then all of a sudden this other thing comes in. It looks like it's going to be a fastball, but instead it's coming with far less velocity, and you look stupid because you swung out in front of it. Wow. Okay. All right, you got to keep them guessing. Can't make that mistake. Here's a closer look at Apple's canceled air power wireless charger. A working air power prototype has emerged. Yeah. Ooh, what a slick little find. Obviously, Apple probably does not want this thing uh, on eBay or wherever the heck it happened to be posted. They like to keep that stuff close, even those prototypes. Every so often, you'll see like an iPhone prototype pop mm -hmm. up from a, a previous generation, which was some sort of a developer version or model with early software on it. You see that stuff happen, Will? Yeah. Now, this product, what's cool about it is it never materialized into a final form. It was one of the rare rumored Apple products that um, got canceled, right? Mm -hmm. What, I mean, right now, as far as wireless chargers go, I mean, just just, just to refresh my memory here, you have the MagSafe little puck and mm -hmm. you have that folding floppy thing as well. But, but you never got a real air power yet. No. Where it's like a charging mat for all three, but you of that course looks nice. You have some third-party stuff which sure. aims to do something similar, but either way, now you have a relic. Now you have a, a little museum item over here, and it also has gotten torn down by Giulio Zampetti, a 28-year-old from Italy. He says he's been able to purchase a prototype air power unit from Chinese e-waste sources. The unit lacks all of its exterior housing and shows this beautiful and heavy stainless steel chassis, says Zompetti. It does look very Apple-ish. Yeah, and it goes to show that uh, they came close to it. I mean, this is obviously not the final design, but it's it's figured it, out yeah, so in the sense that it's, you know, a physical object. My understanding is everything, all, all, all signs were go, all... all it's green buttons everywhere. All sales were like on a sailboat. What, do you, what would you say if a sail was up? Uh, all sails flying? were they were flying all sails. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they say, but it sounds elevated. Right. All sails were because uh, you put the sail down and you put the sail up, but. What do you do with a sail, man? What do you do with a sail? Mast? Schooners have two or more masts with fore and aft sails. Uh, there's a name for it, man. When you put, I'm sure there's going to be a boat a sailing. Um, Connoisseur? Uh, a captain. Sommelier? There's a captain out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> all, all sails are working. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. all systems go. How about that? Sure. We'll if, go with if, that. If you don't like the sails on the sailboat. Yeah. But my understanding was that it was to do with heat, that they just weren't happy with the thermals. They had 22 coils in there, and they, they just envisioned this thing catching flames on the night, nightstand on a bedside table. And they're like, that ain't Apple. That ain't us. Mm -hmm. And so that had something to do with it getting... Um, killed it doesn't work with production devices because the coils are woken up by the device he says he's been able to charge two prototype devices simultaneously so far 
He received the unit in December. December? He's only telling us about it now? Mm. What's going on, Julio? An engineering prototype not meant for plug and play. Connected my serial lightning cable to it. I could see some chars characters on the log. Here we go. We got a little video. Nice. Oh, wow. You get an animation with the phone. Yeah, they got really far with it. Cool. What does this all mean? Will they eventually do it? Is it the missing piece in the enormous Apple puzzle? Tune in next week to find out. I apologize. You bought me an extra coffee today, so. Yeah. Even, even though it was a small one, it was just a little extra boost from the normal amount. Because so. it's black? Maybe. I mean, uh, yeah, I think there is something to that. Sure. A little, little rocket fuel, courtesy of uh, Tim. Hmm. And I'm talking about the real Tim, not Cook Horton. No. Yeah, I hear you. Everybody around here knows that's the number one Tim around here. Yeah. Call me up or send send an email. Tim Horton, send an email to Will. Um, Look at this ad right here. Mm -hmm. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's episode. You know about HelloFresh. I talked about them in the past. This is how you get those nice, healthy meals into your kitchen. And like a half an hour later, you put it together yourself. And you get to see the ingredients. The fresh ingredients comes right to your door, cuts out the stress Cuts out the hassle and huge variety to choose from. There's truly something for everyone. You just pick and choose whatever you want to show up and the amount of it that you want, depending how many people you're feeding. You can pick based on how long it takes to make or just whatever recipe happens to look good to you. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips with less prep, less effort, and minimal cleanup. So you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. HelloFresh's calorie smart options make it easier to enjoy tasty, lower calorie meals this summer without scouring the grocery store for ingredients and the web for recipes. I personally enjoy HelloFresh meals and they totally come in handy in a pinch. You want something healthy, but you want it fast as well. That's where HelloFresh comes in. Go to HelloFresh.com slash LouLater14 and use code LouLater14 for up to 14 free meals Plus free shipping. That's the best part. 14 free meals. Go to HelloFresh.com slash LouLater14. Use the code LouLater14 for those 14 free meals. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Click the link in the description. Don't forget the code LouLater14. It's 14 free meals. Mm -hmm. Tim well, Cook is in the news, though. Yeah. He comes eighth place in the ranking of uh, top paid CEOs. But then I looked at uh, Bloomberg, and mm. it kind of has like a nice uh, little breakdown. Well, that's lovely. So look at all these uh, CEOs here. Com making, <laughs> compensation quite been, breakdown. Quite yeah, yeah. So so it's it's interesting how they are compensated because obviously Elon Musk is all the way up there, six billion dollars. Um, but it's all completely in option awards. Yes. And. Uh, you could have, could you not? I guess Bezos is not a CEO anymore, but mm -hmm. if you were to look at uh, Jeff's numbers, it would all be stock related as well. On the other hand, we get down to Tim Cook and you see his compensation. Oh, he's all stock awards as well. And yeah. a tiny sliver of perks. Who just gets a salary? Look, nobody on there. So, <laughs> yeah, we can break it down a little bit more. Oh, wow. And, uh, I like how they have a button for scale without Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. like, get rid of that guy. He, yeah, he's too much. That thing is too big. Get rid of that guy. We can't even pay. We can't even figure this out. You have uh, Mike uh, Psychosis. <laughs> Psychosis. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough Whoa. last name there. Mike Psychosis. <laughs> <laughs> This is a CEO, by the way, who made uh, $568 million, and I'm laughing, but it's, yeah. I'm sure that they find some other way to say that name so it doesn't sound, it doesn't get confused with. Sure. Uh, I guess it could be Picos. Let's go with that. Yeah. Mike Picos. Uh, anyway, so yeah, 568. We have someone from, uh, he's from Oak Street Health. Couple health guys up here. Good RX Holdings. Open Door Technologies, Palantir Technologies, another Oak Street Health, 
And then we get down to Tim Cook uh, at number eight. And I'm sure some people are sitting here thinking that Apple's catching a deal. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> they got no problem making money courtesy of uh, Tim Cook's involvement, I guess. Uh, but it seems crazy to say that two hundred and sixty-five million dollars is not enough. Mm -hmm. That seems crazy to say. But um, I don't know. I guess if he's staring across the table at Elon Musk with the six and a half billion, yeah, that could be that a problem. sounds pretty sweet. That could be a problem. But so much of that is tied up with the stock. Anyway, congrats, Tim. Mm -hmm. Um, you did it, buddy. Yeah, you can you could buy you could buy Tim Hortons if you wanted, and then you could just cancel it so you can have no Tim competition. Who's the next the Tim? Ultra Tim? Yeah, who's the next Tim competition? Would you say, like, as far as big Tims are concerned, top <laughs> Tims? Yeah. Well, you're looking at sports history. Those are the big Tims in. Sports history, but famous. You need famous Tims. Uh, yeah, that's right. Tim Burton, yeah, okay, filmmaker. We know yeah. him. Tim McGraw, the country yeah. singer. We got a couple TikTok stars on there. There's, of course, Tim Allen, uh -huh. Tim Tebow, and uh, but yeah, Tim Hortons is uh, that's a famous Tim right there. And Tim Cook. Don't forget Tim Cook. I'm surprised Tim Cook didn't come up in the list, actually. Yeah. Anyhow. Anyways. Xiaomi dethroned Samsung to become the world's largest smartphone brand. Many suspected something like this could happen. Mm -hmm. Samsung's manufacturing constraints have allowed Xiaomi to overtake the Korean brand for the very first time ever. That's a cool-looking phone. That's that monster camera module phone. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember the name of it right now, but uh, Xiaomi has sub brands and just so many different skews on the market. Um, many budgets, many at, varieties at, of at, phones. at all the different ranges. Constantly making phones, new variants. They got is a new phone every yeah. two weeks uh -huh. when you're Xiaomi. Uh, this is still impressive. Samsung has been at the top of that list every single quarter for. Seems like a long time. Latest data from CounterPoint Research sees Xiaomi pulling ahead of Samsung for the first time. Xiaomi witnessed a monthly sales hike of 26% in June 2021. I I mean, I have to assume that Xiaomi could have gobbled up some of the leftovers from the Huawei debacle that's going on mm. with components and tariffs and sanctions and all this stuff. And Xiaomi's like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fill that gap right there. Mm-hmm. No problem. Uh, Samsung is likely to retake the lead in the coming months following the launch of the Galaxy Z Fold 3, my most anticipated phone. Mm -hmm. That's the phone that I am most excited for right now, period, probably for the next while. That you'll probably use? Go yeah, no, no, not probably. That's not a problem. Oh, okay. That's not a probably. All right. No problem. Not probably, yes. Okay. Xiaomi is having tremendous 2021 overtook Apple to become the second largest smartphone brand in the world and surpassed Samsung in Europe to take the lead in the region in Q2O in Europe. Okay. According to the latest monthly pro projections by CounterPoint Research, Xiaomi has dethroned Samsung to become the largest smartphone brand in the world. And look at their rise. You see that little orange line down there? Mm -hmm. You know I love an infograph here and there. It's going up. Everybody likes it's on up. the rise. That's like you talking about Ethereum. You go, hey, Lou, did you see Ethereum? It goes up. It's it going up. Goes up, Lou. You yep. should take a look, bud. And I say, okay, let me take a look. I see a line that's going up. Yeah, I have a chart with a big arrow. Yeah, just a line going up. Yeah. You know? And nobody complains about that. Everybody wants to see the line going up. Well, anyway, you can see Apple. I mean, all these brands, they, they, they go up and down with the launch of products. But you can see in Xiaomi's case, it's a little, it's much more gradual. Yes. And this could have something to do with hedging less on any one specific device launch, but instead uh, doing this with a tremendous variety of product options and sub-brands, as I mentioned previously. But mm -hmm. it's neck and neck. It's tight between those three. Like, look at that. 17.1%, 157 and 14.3%. And everybody always wants me to clarify when we're looking at these figures. This has to do 
with global monthly smartphone sales sell through volumes. We're talking about number of units, not necessarily the price of each unit, not necessarily the profit that's generated, but just mm -hmm. units getting sent out into the world. Counterpoint is always bringing the good stuff when uh, they're doing their research. That's why they're called Counterpoint Research. Yes. Xiaomi Mi Mix 4 display design teased promises truly full screen experience. I think that's not supposed to be like that in the headline, right? Where they have the I capitalized after the X. Uh, like in the word Xiaomi there. Oh, yeah. It's a misspelling. Well, it's just, they sure. just got to go in there and put the lowercase on the I. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I, uh, I was misspelling Xiaomi in my head. Smelling? Was... You were misspelling? <laughs> <laughs> misspelling. You misspelled Yeah, it. this I looks very strange with, uh, the uppercase. Yeah, I mean, I'm I sure like, that I'm hmm. sure that now does that they see this on, on the show, they're gonna go it in does. there and they'll just uh, yeah, they'll, they'll fix, just it fix that out real quick. It's not a big deal. Back in October, Xiaomi announced that the Mi Mix Three smartphone. The company did not release its successor in 2019, 2020. Recently, the company confirmed that it will be announcing the Mi Mix Four on August 10th. I've goofed around with the Mix devices. They always have that aggressive screen to body ratio. Yeah. Oh. So they've been playing with uh, you know a couple ads here that show like a waterfall display. Mm -hmm. But now they're really touting like an all screen display. Are they touting? Oh yeah. They're out there touting. Yeah. Wow. 2021. Did they say anything else specific about the date? Just be beyond um, 2021? Or? August 10th. Oh, August 10th. Yeah. So some more news with it. Um, it might come with the, uh, actually it will come since it's a teaser, under display camera, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. We tested it out. I'm skeptical a little bit. It's cool. I don't really care because I don't really take be taking those uh, front-facing images. So I can live. I'm fine with it. But mm -hmm. my experience so far testing it is it's not completely invisible. It's probably uh, less. Well, it is definitely less obvious than a hole punch. Mm -hmm. uh, but the camera was a little bit funky in performance. Right. Front facing. Mm -hmm. This is the screen pixel photo of Xiaomi Mix 4, currently the best UDC display solution. So this is from Ice Universe, otherwise known as at Universe Ice on Twitter. And he's got some cool close-ups of the display tech there. Mm -hmm. This is exciting. Uh, this, because because the other stuff I looked at with the under display camera uh, has been kind of concepty like i don't know if it was stuff that was commercially available or not oh maybe the axon 20 might have been yeah it was available yeah the axon 20 i take that back that this is the model that i uh played with mm -hmm. and, and i think oppo's working and, on and i gotta too. be honest because i know i know that you, uh, people out there in the world that are uh, looking at this content and seeing the way that it looks on camera the, the notch killer, the under display thing, when, when they see the video or the photos that you're showing right now, it makes it look very uh, um, aggravating. The way you look at it, it looks like these like blurry pixels. Mm -hmm. We worked in the video to make it show up that way. At most angles, you don't even notice it. Right. We had to find the right way on camera to be able to even show it to you. So it's, it's kind of exaggerated in the contents content that's out there so for people saying oh that's annoying it's like something i want to rub off my screen or something the vast majority of the time you're not seeing it appear like that yes it's more subtle and also the technology is just going to get better if yeah. people want it they're gonna put some compromises or just make it better yeah in some form it's just time so I, I I love the idea of just all screen anyway. Like yeah. it's a that's a cool science fiction kind of progression promise. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have some official wallpapers for the new Pixel Six and Six Pro. Uh, this is another type of leak, I guess, mm -hmm. where it's like the product's not out yet, but we're gonna keep getting you hyped for it by not just telling you we're launching the thing and giving you certain specs, but now we're going to give you the wallpapers as well. Yeah. And this you're going to get a, a sense for the whole 
uh, aesthetic of the thing is they're sticking with the food theme and the sweet theme mm. here because, you know, with the Android flavors of, of the past, you have here Thirst Quencher, which looks like, I'm going I'm, I'm to go ahead and say that that's a, a glass of lemonade. Sure. I'm going to go yes. ahead and say that. And uh -huh. then you have Watermelon Falls, which watermelon's probably my favorite fruit flavor. I, like as yes. far as like, taking a bite out of a fruit, maybe I shouldn't say fruit flavor in general because like, I guess there's a lot to that. What do you mean? Well, you start thinking about fruit, how many things are fruit flavored that aren't the actual fruit. Oh, okay. Like fruit drinks and. Uh -huh. But uh, what's your what's your fruit though? No, if it's, if if I'm, if I'm gonna take a bite of a fruit, mm. I'm gonna take a bite of a watermelon. Okay. I've done this recently. Do you add any accru accoutrements? I'll tell you something that's been happening in my house in the fridge. There's been the watermelon cut into the cubes, and uh -huh. you would just reach and you would just take a cube of watermelon. Okay. You would just eat that. Seedless. Isn't everything, uh -oh. isn't everything seedless? Now, I don't know. Maybe you bump into a seed here and there. Uh -huh. But the key factor here is the refreshment. You might not even need to reach for some water when you got the watermelon nearby. Yeah. Just like a cube of refreshment. Yeah. Would... But I like all fruits, man. I, don't, I really don't want to do this, what you're forcing me to do right now. Because I don't want to leave... And, and it's going to depend on the time of year as well. Like, obviously, okay, there's yeah. no watermelon in the winter. No one's goofing with watermelon. It's very specific with watermelon, too. The difference, it's a wide gap between a good watermelon and bad watermelon in the sense, like, a bad watermelon, I don't even want to go near it. Apples are consistent. You're always getting a good apple. Yeah. If With a watermelon, you have one watermelon that's over here, and you have one that's down here. This one, I'm skipping. This one. Well, I'm, yeah, there's levels to everything. No, no, but I'm saying there's... The gap, the peaks and valleys on watermelon is far more sub significant than, say, uh, apples or bananas. Right. Or even pears, for that matter. Do so you... Uh, you getting consistent textures and flavors over there. Do you add salt? You're talking about salted watermelon? Mm. And then you're casually nodding like that? Like, <laughs> this is a thing that everybody's doing? Yeah, people doing? do that. Well, maybe people do. Or let me one-up you. Um, there's a uh, mustard... Okay, let's, it's, let's, it's a, can we it's stop, a thing. can we not do that? All right. People put mustard on watermelon? Yeah, it's a thing now. It's, it's a trend now. You putting your <laughs> foot down or what? Yeah. So did you do it? I tried it, yeah. You, you just squirt some watermelon or some uh, mustard on the watermelon? <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. It, it, what I happened? didn't like it. Okay, good. But it's apparently a lot of people do. Yeah, maybe it's an acquired thing. I, I, you know what? I'm not trying to put down anything. I, okay. Well, give it a try. It's a weird thing with you the flavors. Like it. Anyway, other, other uh, wallpapers include fruits. That's the simplest one. And then cherry cone. And one thing you notice about them, they all have worked in the, uh, the camera hole punch thing. Yeah. They found a way to work it in, which people love that. I guess people the are real just fired up. Uh, there's more. We got more. These are, are, are oh, wow. Like uh, I the creator type? Or? I really like a match point with yeah. the foot in the foreground and then the racket with the weird aspect. This is some nice artwork. It's some cool artwork. Yeah, with the, yeah, the integration of the camera. And I guess people could start using these right now if they had a phone... I mean, you don't even necessarily need a phone with the hole punch on it. This one's cool. Cloud surfing. Yeah. Very cool. Is that your favorite one? Uh, Do you it like, might be. I kinda like, Maybe this one? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, nice. I kind of like deep sea. Yeah. yeah. Nice yeah. tones. All right, well. Very friendly. Get me pumped up for this pixel stuff. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. Did you uh, happen to see this uh, star base tour? From this uh, this guy, is that everyday astronaut? Mm -hmm. Okay, I know his channel. I've seen him interview, or at least talk to Elon Musk in the past. He's, I mean, as the name implies, big SpaceX guy. Yeah, look, I mean, like, look at his T-shirt. He's ready to go. Uh -huh. Anyway, no, I have not seen this tour. This seems it was like it's going to be cool. A little bit. And if you ever want to be a fly on the wall at Starbase, this is the video to watch because 
he literally just goes in to Starbase with Elon and asks him the most technical questions that he can, that he knows of. And Elon just answers. He just goes off. And it's, it's a really long, in-depth, technical uh, video with him um, just at Starbase. And it's a pretty interesting video. That's 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 pretty much it, and no, it's, it's part one. Hey it's man, part. hey, you don't have to convince me. You, you saw yeah. the reason I went quiet is because I'm 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 imagining uh, this tour. I mean, you get you getting yourself a tour. Yeah. Which remember the one guy went in there unauthorized, uh huh, and then got arrested or whatever. No, this is the way to do it right here. You got the tour guide. Yeah, which he is, has Elon for I guess in this video an hour, and uh, just talks shop with him. About how the rocket is made. These things are massive. The design, the challenges that he's faced. <laughs> the what scale his of it. When, are. Once, you, once you see a, like a person up there on the mm -hmm. lift, you see the human next yes. to the human for scale. Uh huh. Starbase factory tour with Elon Musk. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This should have more views. What is it? Is it 971,000? Yeah. It was uploaded yesterday. Yeah. This should have more. Yeah. we People should go watch this for sure. That's, that's very interesting. That's cool. And the part two is... He said it's going to be more interesting. So look forward to it. All right. Nice recommendation. Well, good find. Netflix announces SpaceX documentary on yep. civilian mission into orbit. So following up on that last one, the privately chartered flight will be commanded, funded, and led by 38-year-old billionaire Jared Isaacman and aim to support St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Mm -hmm. This September, we're all going to space so they're gonna make a netflix documentary about it mm -hmm. huh the group will board a spacex capsule next month and spend three days orbiting three days yeah. orbiting the earth becoming netflix's first documentary to cover an event in near real time the privately chartered flight will be commanded funded and led by 38 year old billionaire yeah jared isaacman does he what is that photo of there Writing my name on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket that will take me and my... So so the people that are... This says Dr. Proctor. So it's going to be doctors from St. Jude's Hospital? Um, I don't think it says in this article. Uh, former Geoscientist and former NASA candidate. Okay, never mind. Oh, oh. Yeah, there you go. Christopher Zimbrowski, a U.S. Air Force veteran, and Haley Arsenault, a doctor's assistant at St. Jude and childhood and a childhood cancer survivor. So it's kind of like a, a group of people selected. I don't know how they were selected to be the ones, but they're civilians. They're not astronauts. Mm -hmm. and, and they're led by a crew of astronauts. This is cool. Up yeah. there for three days is no joke. That's not like your the tip. That's not the stuff that Bezos and... Uh, uh, Branson are doing. Yeah, they're staying up there. The group will apparently reach a higher altitude than the International Space Station as they orbit the planet in the SpaceX Dragon capsule dubbed Inspiration 4. The quick turnaround documentary will be made in five parts with the first two premiering on the 6th of September. That's soon. Mm -hmm. And the actual launch is scheduled for 15 September. Wow. Okay. Man, the space thing. The space thing. It's coming on up. Gets realer and realer. Mm-hmm. All right, last one. American Airlines will let you watch 30 minutes of TikTok in the air for free. Yeah. Just what you needed to relax on your flight. Perfect. Uh, so they're just they're giving you a little bit of Wi-Fi. So yes. then and then they hit you with the paywall and they're like, hey, you want to keep you want you need to keep need to keep watching those TikToks right there. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, they enable it on your phone. Okay. It's pretty much like Wi-Fi, but specific to TikTok for 30 mm -hmm. minutes. <laughs> Wow. And then you're done. It's over. Holy Such cow. a strange uh, ad. I Passengers thought. will be able to use the app for up to 30 minutes for free, which gives them time to watch at least 10 of the new longer TikToks. So this is a real collaboration. Which is like three minutes. Partnership. They have, Wait a sec. There's three minute TikToks now? Yeah. yeah. See, so TikTok so was like, oh, hey, YouTube, you want to do shorts? Fine. We're doing three minute videos uh -huh. like you do. We can, do you think that's hard to do? We can do that. And they also have stories now. If you don't have the app already installed, the airline says you'll be able to download it for free while in the air. 
The move to make TikTok available to travelers comes as airlines are trying to get attention back on flying. Mm -hmm. According to the airline's press release, the promotion is a trial. Yes. And customer response will determine how long the trial will last. So I guess you just, uh, yeah, there you go. They have Wi-Fi systems in the plane from Viasat. I wonder how fast it'll be. That's really the key thing here. And I'm curious from, from uh, airline to airline, if any can really improve the Wi-Fi experience because it hasn't, I haven't flown have in Have you a, tried it? Like yeah, Wi-Fi? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I it's slow? I haven't flown in a while. Yeah, it's always slow. You can't watch 4K content? I did effectively one time stream a UFC event. Oh, okay. In the air on the Wi-Fi. But the only way I could get it to work was by, I don't even want to say, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, you hacked it? I mean, I didn't hack it, hack it, but I had to do... You bypass the router? There was some kind of a bandwidth restriction per device that I was able to sort oh, out. So everyone got slow Wi-Fi and you just took all the Wi-Fi. I don't, I feel like there was more Wi-Fi to go around. We'll see about that. <laughs> man, it's hard when you're up there, man. Yeah. I, hear you. I mean, okay, why can't we figure that out? It's 2021. Yeah. It, can we do that? Are we, are we ready for that yet? No. Better Wi Fi in the sky? Someone's doing it. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, someone's, you let me know it down in the comments if you flew on an airplane recently. And if the Wi-Fi is better than it used to be. I'm yeah. curious. Let me know.